Hello, hello, hello. My name is Sarah and this is And Sarah Appeared, the visual podcast. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, and sharing. And I'm appearing before you today because 2022 has been one of the best years in my entire life. Here's why. It has taught me to keep my gaze on Jesus. This morning, I had a wonderful delight of a sermon um, that I came across from Pastor, let me see, Pastor Maria Gardner Langston. Pastor Maria Gardner Langston's sermon on Keep Your Gaze of Jesus basically summed up my entire experience from dedicating my life to Christ in March of this year up until now. And this has been one of the most rewarding years, like, in my salvation that I have ever, ever encountered. One, I have been completely freed from the opinion of man. Two, I have learned to sharpen my focus and my discernment to hone in on what God would have for me and what the end goal is. Three, I have been out here trusting God, making moves, and walking in real faith, not future faking, but walking in real faith that has aligned me to what God has wants for my purpose. And four, like I have been like leaning on God and leaning on his understanding, like without even though like there's been times where my faith has been wavered and I've been like, I don't even know if I want to, I don't know what's going on. Should I go to church? Should I not go to church? Um, you know, I, I feel a certain way. Should I sleep with this person? Should I not sleep with this person? Hey, I can talk about these things pertaining to my life because even though there are, um, avenues and paths that I wish I could take, I don't take them. My prayer life is not enough to keep me saved. It takes nurturing the relationship with the Holy Spirit to keep me saved. Okay, I'm not going to sit up here and be a hypocrite and act like there's times where I don't want to fornicate. I'm not going to sit up here and be a hypocrite and act like there's times where I just want to sit in my, I don't want to sit in my car and light up a blunt because I'm going through things. You might want to sit there and act like you're holier than thou, but I'm not. And the reason why I'm going to sit there and I'm going to tell of my testimony and be authentic and real about some of the things that I go through and some of the questions and the things that go on in my mind is because I'm not actively participating in these things. I want to, but I'm not. And how do I prevent from doing that? The power of the Holy Ghost. Nurturing the relationship that I have with the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's the only way. Yeah, I do I have a prayer life? Yeah, I got a prayer life. You know, do do I consecrate myself to God? Yeah, I consecrate myself to God. But is that enough to keep myself together and whole and this and this and that? No, it's, it's not. It's not. I have to really be in conversation and I have to really um, train myself to love God in a way to where I think about, is this action that I'm devising in my heart? Is this thing that I want to do? Is this really like showing my love to God in the way that I profess that I love him? Is it? Do I love him as much as I say I should? So this year has been like one of the best years in my entire life because my capacity to love God has grown in spite of everything that has happened, been said, false narratives, false um like, like I said, future fakings and everything else. Like, this really has been, like, one of the best years of my life. My Holy Ghost boldness has increased. And it's boldness. It's not rebellion. You can sit up there and be fooled and tricked and take bribes if you want to. I'm not. I'm not. 
like I'm getting back on this like holiness or hell type thing. And holiness has nothing to do with, you know, how we dress or holiness has nothing to do with what's going on with, you know, how we think and who we talk to and who we interact with. Like holiness is literally defined being defined what i'm seeing it as is how much do you really love god and do you need um a, a new heart or a larger capacity to love him do you love him enough to say i can't do that i want to but i can't like i'm at that point and i love it it's caused me to be outcast. It's caused me to be called out. It's caused me to have all, you know, it's caused like, you know, some issues for me. But I love that. I'm still alive. And not only that, I love that hell is seeing me um, come back to life. Like, I serve a God that operates in resurrecting power. How could I be a walking dead? Do you not know the God I serve? Are we serving the same God? Can't be. Period. Can't be. Are we serving the same God? Do you like do you not understand that my God rose on the third day? Jesus rose on the third day. That's my God. Yeshua, Jesus, um Yahweh, that's my God. Son of Adonai, son of David, that's my God. Can these dry bones live? Mine are. And so this is the best year that I've had mm, in a long time. I mean, the curses that have been and are actively being broken. Family curses. Um, the sabotage that's being broken. Um ecclesiastical curses that have been broken um like i'm grateful like i'm so grateful for jesus like it's literally if god be for you who be against you like i'm so grateful i'm so grateful to jesus like you might have to stop Start over, go back to the drawing board, relocate. Um, it might, you know, God might cause you to be out there, put your face on camera and start speaking according to what thus says the Lord is. You may have um, times where... You drop the ball, times where you don't always get it right. You might have times where you've fallen publicly. Things that you thought were going to be private come out public. And you get up and you dust yourself off and you try again. Why? Because we serve a God that has resurrecting power. Don't call something, someone, or even a place, a dead thing, when you were never the power to bring it back to life in the first place. Don't get your britches too big out there. Like, a lot of people have a God complex. Yo, that's dangerous. I'm a living testimony. Like, I'm a walking, living testimony. I don't care who has a God complex. I don't care who is the most anointed cherubim. Jesus is still on the throne. He's at the right hand of the Father, and he's still alive and well. And um, you, uh, you're you not going to be able to change. Some people are frustrated because they can't make God change the, his mind about you. Some people's punishment is going to be seeing you come back from the very thing that the enemy tried to 
snuff you out from. The enemy tried to snuff your voice out, snuff your ministry out. The enemy tried to intimidate you and make you run away. The enemy even paid people to come up against you. Yeah. No tea, no shade. Get your money. Gas is $6 a gallon out here. Hey, I'm just out here trusting God. Some of y'all out here just like taking bribes. That's okay. I still got love for you. But I bet you one thing. I shall live and not die. And you're going to have to live with that. Bye for now.